Hugo is a 2011 film that turns 10 this year, therefore it gave me a pretty darn good excuse to finally sit down and give you guys my review for said film. Now Hugo, for those of you who don't know, is based on a book, and it is about an orphan who is living in the walls of a train station, whilst at the same time going through a mystery involving his father. This is a film that has an A-list cast. It has Ben Kingsley, Asa Butterfield, Chloe Grace Moretz, Ray Winston, Michael Stuhlberg, young Michael Stuhlberg, I might add, before he was famous and everything. It's a loaded cast, among many, many other actors. Um, this is also written by John Logan, the same writer who gave us Last Samurai, Skyfall, Sweeney Todd, Gladiator, amongst many other movies. He's a really good writer. I'm a huge fan of him. And then, of course, we also have Martin Scorsese directing this film. Martin Scorsese, for those of you that don't know for some reason, he is the same director that gave us The Last Temptation of Christ, Silence, Goodfellas, The Departed, The Aviator, among many others. He is a director that, honestly, I'm a big fan of. I'm not as big of a fan as many other people, but he is a director that I really do like. I've actually ranked all of his films. You guys can check that out down below. Although, I will say that list has changed, and I might re-rank it at some point. But, guys, Hugo, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background of this movie, at least for myself, because... Hugo is a film that I did see a decade ago. Um, I remember when this movie came out, it was around the same time War Horse came out, and I remember with my family, we were all trying to decide what to watch, and then I remember my sister, my little brother, and then my mom wanted to see Hugo based on the trailers, and then my dad and myself wanted to see War Horse. We had more inclination towards that movie, um, especially since at that point, I knew who Steven Spielberg was, I didn't really know who Scorsese was because Obviously, now I know Scorsese does a lot of like R-rated films and everything. I was still young, and especially living in a religious household, you don't really have that choice of being able to watch R-rated films. So Scorsese was someone I wasn't really too familiar with. So we decided to actually go see War Horse, my dad and myself. And um, I'll never forget watching War Horse. I, I was kind of honestly disappointed by it. And then my mom, my sister, and my little brother were kind of bored by Hugo. And that being said, I still wanted to see Hugo because although I wasn't a big fan of the trailers and had more interest in War Horse, I knew it was going to be up for some Oscars and everything. And so several months later, I got it from the library. I believe it was on DVD. And I watched it and I thought it was boring, honestly. I thought it was really boring, actually. I, I got to change it. It was really, really boring for myself. I just really couldn't get into it. I watched the whole thing, but I was like, eh, I don't really like this. And the thing about this is that I was also the same type of viewer that at that point in my life, was just getting into like Oscar type movies. Um, I still very much have had a handle on like blockbuster cinema. Like I loved the Transformer movies during that time. So it was kind of jarring to go from like those movies to then a movie like Hugo, which is more about taking its time as well as just a lot of appreciation for the filmmaking. But I always said to myself, you know, Scorsese is a director that I'm a huge fan of. With each time that I decide to rewatch one of his movies, I always find myself saying, wow, I'm so glad I rewatched this movie because he's an amazing director. And Hugo always kind of stuck out because I was like, well, I'm always finding his movies to be energetic, entertaining, and interesting. But Hugo, I didn't find it that way. So I decided to finally sit down and rewatch this movie, but I kept on putting it off. And I kept putting it off and off and off over the years until finally I was at the record store a month ago. And keep in mind, a month ago, I was at the record store and I saw that they had a copy of Hugo, which I might add, they always seem to have Hugo, like a copy of Hugo in some way, shape, or form. But every time I would go to the record store, I'd be putting it off. But last month, I decided that I was actually going to get it out because although I looked at it and I was like, you know what? I wasn't a big fan of this. At the same time, the film critic filmed up for myself was like, yeah, but Chad, you also hadn't even seen a silent film a decade ago. So of course, you're not going to be able to appreciate Hugo a decade ago. So I decided to take a risk spend $3 and get it on Blu-ray. And I watched it yesterday, and I know that's a lot of exposition, guys, but I feel like it's important for you guys to understand my background, my relationship with this movie. Um, I rewatched this movie after a decade last night, and I have to say, I was quite impressed by this movie. I think it's really incredible that Scorsese did this film because, like I said, he's known for a lot of like adult-oriented movies, and this movie was advertised and marketed towards kids. It's PG, but I feel like kids can't really appreciate this movie as much as adults, at least specifically adults that have an appreciation for filmmaking, because this is definitely like a film buffs type movie. This is a movie that is all about the silent era of cinema and the transition of like, you know, obviously silent movies to talkies. Um, specifically, there's a director in this movie, and I'm not gonna say the character in case you guys haven't seen the movie, but there's a character that wasn't able to transition from silent movies to talkies, he wasn't. He said it himself that a lot of people just weren't able to appreciate silent films because once they got the talkies, it was the type of situation where they, they wanted that. So he wasn't able to transition from, obviously, that era of filmmaking. And 
it's very emotional for myself because I feel like Scorsese is a director that he's trying. He's really trying, but he has been making a lot of commentary about the industry. Literally a decade ago, he was at the top of his form. He was a director that literally, when you heard his name, you knew that he was going to be able to get funding for his movies and everything. But a decade later, we were living in the Star Wars, Marvel, just superhero-esque era of filmmaking. And he is a director that he's done all different kinds of genres, but he doesn't really want to go into that market of it because he knows, in his opinion, that it is very much so like a roller coaster ride and not like cinema such as like Hugo. And I think that it's kind of saddening because for the Irishman, he wasn't able to get funding. He literally had to go through a streaming site. And that for me is just very emotional because that is literally what Hugo is about. Obviously, it's a big difference between silent and talkies, but at the same time, not really because we're going from being able to do different kind of genres, get funding for that and be able to make money back. You're not able to do that now. You now have to make it so that it's an IP that's recognizable in order to make money. And I know this is not the usual kind of review for myself, but the reason why I'm saying all this is because I had an emotional connection with this movie. Throughout the duration of this movie, and especially the final act, the final act is what really hit hard when the themes and messages just really hit home about, especially the relevance of Scorsese with this. It's very saddening. And it's the tip of the iceberg. The themes and messages of the storytelling are what really make me appreciate this movie. Because again, it's not even just nostalgia for the base of nostalgia. It is literally picking apart nostalgia and saying to how some people are trying. They're trying their best to be able to move on and be able to move forward at the same time, but they're not really able to because the times aren't able to accept them. And I think that message is something that Scorsese has really been tackling, and I, I love it. But it's not even that as to why I like this film. It also helps that the filmmaking itself is incredible. You know, this is a film with top-notch visual effects. Even a decade later, it holds up really, really well. Cinematography is also incredible. I mean, Scorsese loves tracking shots. He loves having the camera always move, and this, this film is no different. There is a lot of different type of camera angles that are utilized, but those angles in particular, I really loved. Uses of color is also incredible, especially with this movie taking place in Paris. It's great to see these colors really vibrant off the screen. I loved it. The score by Howard Shore is also immaculate. Um, I remember a decade ago thinking that the score wasn't that good, but a decade later, obviously, I have a lot more appreciation for film scores, more so than ever, not just it being lombastic over and over. I really think that the score here is something special. I really like it. Howard Shore should be very proud. He did a great job with the score. Sound mixing and sound editing are also incredible. Um, now, with all these technical aspects that I'm mentioning, I do have to say that, although I love these technical aspects, I do have to say that for the Oscars, I do think that for cinematography in particular and score, I do think that those two should have honestly gone to Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. But that being said, it's still great to see Hugo obviously pick up Oscars because it is one of those movies that I feel like people can go back to and see that, hey, it won five Oscars, let me give this movie a chance. But at the same time, I'm also going to call out Letterboxd, particular people that follow me, and say that it saddens me to see that this movie on Letterboxd gets a lot of like two, two and a half, and three out of five star ratings from people that I follow because this is a movie that it's not basic. It is honestly one of the best family-friendly movies I've seen. It is geared towards families, but again, it's easily one of the best family-friendly movies I've seen. It's a movie that I look forward to showing my kids. It's a movie that I look forward to showing my kids and being able to say to them, look, this is the era of silent films. This is something that not many people talk about, honestly, but they should talk about it. And I like that Scorsese obviously is very careful with doing this movie and having it be worth focusing on the restoration of films too, because that's something he's an advocate for too. And honestly, I feel like not many people really understand that history of something is important. History is a reminder of how far people have come. And honestly, it's also a reminder of telling of times. You know, I can't wait to show my kids modern times and then, you know, showing them other Charlie Chaplin films and then showing them Hugo and saying, well, look, this movie is paying homage to those type of movies, but at the same time holds up on its own. And that's not really something you can really say too, too much about certain movies. You know, we live in a world where nostalgia is very much so relished, especially in cinema. And I feel like it's something that's a very delicate balance. And Hugo definitely strikes it because it definitely holds up on his own. I love this film. I really think that it's not perfect, though. I will say that although I think it stands out among many other movies in terms of this genre, I think that what makes it kind of fall a little bit faltering in terms of like not being a masterpiece is that I do think that although the characters are striking and very much so unique in their approach, I do think that at times they do kind of fall into cliches where they do things just because. Um, and that's just like a personal preference. I am not a big fan of when characters do that, but 
I did kind of feel that a little bit at times. Um, and I also think that the narration at the very end while in Chloe Grace Moretz, I think that there should have been the narration. I get why they had that, because obviously this is a movie that's geared towards kids, which, although, as I mentioned earlier, it really isn't. It's towards a very niche audience, but it's it's the skies that's a kid-friendly movie. I think that that narration at the end kind of hampered my experience with that ending. But besides those things, I really do like this movie. Again, I love the fact that Martin Scorsese was marketed to do like a kid movie, you know, family-friendly movie at that, but at the same time, it's a movie that is way more than that. There's a lot more under the surface. It's a movie that is obviously about the love for silent cinema, the importance of restoration, the importance of looking back at time and understanding that looking back at those movies and everything helps for the forefront of movies and how, you know, movies aren't just a roller coaster ride. They are more important than that. They are obviously something that you can get a lot from, which is what Hugo did for me. I got a lot from Hugo, and that's why Hugo, for me personally, I will be giving a Four out of five star rating, which for those that like a hot sauce rating gets the good old Louisiana Pure Crystal hot sauce. So yeah, Hugo, I really liked. I'm a big fan of, obviously. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to watching this many more times, especially as I mentioned with my kids that I have in the future. But guys, Hugo, what did you guys think about it? Did you like it? Did you not? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always, don't forget the subscription, notification bell, and all that. Catch you guys later.